SGC here. Let's do the comic pick. The Brie actually came out last week. Forgot to pick it up. Picked it up this week. I totally like how it started. I mean, the whole like, oh, this is actually happening in a previous time. And I don't tell you. Because I'm really not liking the comics that start with two hours ago or 72 hours earlier. I mean, is there a reason that you needed to start the story then? Then right now, as in the current time. And this totally needed it because it showed her as a little kid. The whole bullet thing was pretty interesting in the sense where when you're out of bullets, nothing is needed to be done. That's pretty wicked in the sense how powerful that weapon is. And with how the issue ended, it's like, whoa, finally, there's more people. Lobster Johnson! I picked up the last two one-shots that came out recently. This one came out most recent, and this was sort of earlier. But let's talk about the earlier. Action was awesome. Lobster Johnson as usual. But I must say, it was pretty awkward ending for me, because he threw a grenade, and that was it. I mean, how do you destroy a mummified mummy that's crazy on killing you with a grenade? I don't know, maybe blowing him away, but I thought he would come back to life and still come to haunt you. And it just ended. And I was like, oh, it ended. I wish there was more. This one, on the other hand, I was totally impressed with how things happened and him just disarming everybody and, like, foiling the horrible plan of, like, melting bodies from within was pretty crazy. World's Finest, Huntress, and Power Girl. I must say I was sort of like, eh, when I first turn to the first page where it says who did what and there's actually three artists in this issue you have George Peretz who did the penciling and within the framing sequence and then you have Jeremy Ordway who did the power girl sequence and you have Wes Craig who did the huntress sequence right off the bat I was like great there's gonna be different art styles I mean like why would they do that is this guy like behind in schedule or something man the contrast was awesome I mean the power girl stuff was fine in its own sense I really like how they shredded her clothes and stuff because it was just like trying to bring back the boob window and they're just ripping her clothes off but at least she has bras and panties so that's great to know that DC editors know that women wear bras and panties Huntress was pretty great I mean like the art style contrast with power girl showing a different vibe I mean there are two different characters and they were doing two standalone stuff. Age of Apocalypse, I was sort of confused as to what happened in this issue because there was a lot of talking and Emma Frost just got her own mind wiped and then Doom got his head cut off. Hey, hey, hey. Sorry, that was a spoiler, but yeah, a lot of talking in this one. Mind tricks worked on the characters, also worked for me. I was trolled and trolled. Boy, oh boy, Uncanny X-Force. Things are just not going great for Wade. I mean, he's the only one that got in, and then he got cancerous pores and stuff like that. And Psylocke's getting her ass kicked by that guy with the hat. Wolverine's doing fine, I assume, because he's not dying yet, but Evan's gonna come out and own somebody, I would say. Eyes, Ferris is here. I picked up Ferris, because I heard great things about it, even though I only read volume one of Fables. I'm still liking the issues here. I mean, the storylines are pretty interesting. Standalone stuff was pretty cool, and this issue was great enough where it dwelled in the city of Japan. I look forward to next issue. Interesting read. Nice. Road to Oz. Like always, Scotty Young is just amazing. Now the kids turn into a fox. Things are, like, a lot magicaler now. You have the fox being turned back into a boy. You have to get Ozma to give an invitation to this fox king. And then now you have that rainbow poly girl. I really liked the Polly girl because it was pretty interesting how Rainbow came onto Earth. Love this series. Can't wait for next issue. Bye to Mern! Things are going nuts because I mean Kingpin's in on the things and Hobgoblin is finally here and you have Madam Web going nuts because of the spider receptors or things whatever they're called. It was a pretty interesting issue where it's so talked about like the spider sense going majorly nuts and yeah ends with the real Hobgoblin showing up and I totally do not know who that is because I just started reading Spider-Man only probably two years ago one year ago probably one year ago so I don't know a lot. So it was great, great issue. End of days, Daredevil. Just a team that's on this should guarantee a buy. Man, oh man. This issue was pretty unexpected. I mean, what happened to Matt Murdock 
was totally not expected so early in the issue. I mean, this is a limited issue of eight issues, so with him out of the picture for a while, it's like, so what's gonna happen? But how they did the turn the story around with like Yurik being a reporter and just so struggling with writing his article, as in like, it's about him, not me. And yeah, I mean, with how the issue ended, I'm really guessing like, who's that? Could it be the new guy? Well, it can't be the old guy because he's out of commission. So I totally look forward to the issue. And the art was awesome! So there you go, that was the comics for this week. And you know I get my comics at Arts Comics, address is below. This week's sale ends on Sunday, is anything that has to do with Stan Lee. So if Stan Lee is somewhere on that comic, 20% off. Isn't that a great deal? Anyway, this was this week's comics. Hope you enjoyed whatever you got, and see ya!